Hi there, I am Juliette. Welcome to our deep dive into the world of assets in accounting. Whether you're an accounting student or just keen on mastering financial concepts, understanding assets is crucial. In this video, we will cover the definition of an asset, the types of assets, how they are split between current and non-current, the different carrying value methods, and their pivotal role in financial statement analysis. So let's get started. The official definition of assets as issued by the FASB in the Statement of Financial Accounting Concepts number eight is, an asset is a present right of an entity to an economic benefit. So what does that mean? Per this definition, an asset has the following two essential characteristics. It is a present right, and that right is to an economic benefit. Let's discuss this. An asset in its simplest form is a resource that holds economic value. Essentially, they are resources owned by a business or individual that are expected to bring future economic benefits. Think of them as valuable items or resources that you can own that can help generate income, reduce expenses, or be sold for cash. Assets can be tangible, like buildings or a piece of machinery, or they can be intangible, not physical, but still valuable, such as copyrights, patents, trademarks, or goodwill. All assets have the capacity to generate income or save costs in the future. They are the economic backbone of any entity, whether a multinational corporation or a small family business. So in essence, assets are valuable resources that provide future economic benefits. The key characteristic of an asset is its ability to provide future economic value to its owner. Now, you might be thinking, that sounds important, and you're right. Assets play a crucial role in the financial health and growth of a business. Assets can be classified into several types based on their nature and the duration for which they are held. In accounting, we refer to this duration as the asset liquidity. We classify assets as either current or non-current based on their liquidity, meaning how quickly they can be converted into cash. Picture current assets as the sprinters on a track team. They are quick, agile, and ready to get moving at a moment's notice. These assets include cash, which is the most liquid because it doesn't need to be converted, it's already ready to go. Prepaids are assets because they are costs paid in advance for services or goods to be received later, like prepaid insurance or rent. While they aren't cash ready, they represent a future benefit that helps maintain the pace and stability of the business. Accounts receivable are amounts customers owe to the business, which are expected to come in soon converted into cash upon collection. There is also inventory, the goods the business has on hand for sale, which can quickly be turned into cash. These assets can become cash or be used within one year, keeping the business moving at a rapid pace. In summary, current assets are assets that can be converted into cash within a year. Because of their duration or liquidity, they are crucial for funding the day-to-day -day operations of the business and allow businesses to meet their short-term obligations. On the other side of the track, we have the non-current assets. Think of these as the marathon runners. They are in it for the long haul. Non-current assets are essential for long-term growth and sustainability. For example, let's take a manufacturing company. It's machinery used to produce goods, the building where the production takes place, and the land it sits on are all non-current assets. They are not expected to be sold or converted into cash in the short term. Instead, they are used over many years to help the business operate and generate income. The main difference between current and non-current assets lies in their liquidity and their role in the business. Current assets help with the day-to-day -day operations and expenses while non-current assets are long-term investments that help a business grow and generate future profits. Now, I wanna take a minute to briefly discuss the difference between tangible and intangible assets. Tangible assets are physical material assets you can touch and see, such as buildings, vehicles, and equipment. 
They can be current or non-current. Intangible assets are assets that lack physical substance. They include intellectual property, patents, trademarks, copyrights, and goodwill. Despite their non-physical nature, intangible assets can be incredibly valuable, often more valuable than the physical assets. These are usually non-current, long-term assets. Let's take a look at how these assets are presented on a balance sheet and discuss that very important question that is probably on your mind right about now. How are assets valued on a balance sheet? Assets is the first section presented on a balance sheet, which also follows the structure of the accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. We now know they are listed in order of liquidity. But how are they valued to accurately reflect their future economic benefit? When assets are first acquired or created, they are recorded on the balance sheet at their acquisition cost. After their initial recording, assets can be valued in various ways, depending on the type of asset and accounting principles used. Let's go over some of them. Cash and cash equivalents are valued at face value or market value, as they represent cash on hand or assets easily convertible to cash. Prepaid expenses are valued at cost, representing payments made for goods or services to be received in the future. Accounts receivable are typically valued at net realizable value, which is the estimated amount expected to be collected after accounting for allowances for doubtful accounts, bad debts. The allowance is the portion of receivables estimated to be uncollectible, customers who won't pay. So to properly report the future economic benefit, the balance sheet amount only shows the portion that is expected to be collected. Inventory is usually valued at the lower of cost or market. This principle ensures that inventory is not overvalued if the market prices drop below its cost. And to properly report its expected future economic benefit. Investments on a balance sheet are valued based on their type, purpose, and accounting standards. Two common investments held by companies are trading and available for sale securities. These are revalued each reporting period at their fair market value, with changes reflected in net income or other comprehensive income. The rationale for this valuation lies in the existence of a readily available market for these securities, allowing companies to sell them quickly. Consequently, the fair value represents the anticipated future economic benefit. Property, plant, and equipment are valued at historical cost, minus accumulated depreciation. Depreciation represents the systematic reduction in the value of an asset over its useful life. This aligns the cost of the asset with the revenues it helps generate in any given period. It also adjusts the value of the asset to represent the remaining future benefit of the asset. Intangible assets, such as patents or trademarks, are typically valued at historical cost and amortized over their useful life, similar to property, plant, and equipment. Goodwill, however, is not amortized, but tested for impairment yearly. Assets are not just items on a balance sheet. They are indicators of a company's health and potential for future growth. In accounting, understanding and managing assets allow businesses to make informed decisions, secure financing, and attract investors. Assets also play a pivotal role in determining a company's net worth, which is the difference between assets and liabilities. Remember the accounting equation? Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity, the net between asset minus liabilities equals the owner's equity. By effectively managing assets, businesses can improve their liquidity, efficiency, and overall financial stability. This leads to a stronger position in the market and build trust with stakeholders, facilitating the achievement of long-term goals. Ultimately, well-managed assets can become a solid foundation for sustainable business growth and innovation, keeping the company competitive in a dynamic economic landscape. And that is it for today's video on accounting assets. I hope you now have a clear understanding of how crucial assets are both 
to the daily operations and the long-term success of a business. Remember, mastering the concept of assets not only enhances your accounting skills, but also equips you with the knowledge to make strategic decisions in any business. If you found this video helpful and wish to deepen your knowledge of financial concepts, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon so you don't miss the next one where I will be moving right along the accounting equation and going over liabilities. Thank you for watching. See you next time.